so yeah, w welcome everyone to uh, Hidden in Plain Text. Uh, I'll be talking uh, about encryption, uh, and then we'll be looking at PGP and GPG to like kind of illustrate the points of uh, encryption. Uh, I ran this workshop on uh, Thursday, so um, if you were there, then this would be uh, kind of the same, the same, same, uh, same material. A little bit added, added, added hey, to it. Hey, hey, Mark, yeah, if I could, yeah, inter to if, if I could interrupt for one second, can, can you I'm lower your volume? Of, I'm a graduate from NYU ITP, uh, and I'm a web developer, and I specialize in digital accessibility. Um, I've an artist and I use code as my primary medium uh, for artwork. And so my interests are involved with, uh, my interests are in, are in uh, community networking to change, try adjusting uh, some of my, my volume. So, this is uh, I'm just going to talk a little bit quieter. Oh, if that's okay. Can't find out where my volume settings are. Um, cool. So, uh, so, I uh, wanted to, like, before we dive into encryption, I wanted to just talk a little bit about uh, some of the history and kind of relate it back to um, on, like, pre digital uh, practices. So, when we're thinking about um, encryption, we're like often think about it in terms of uh, sending messages uh, to, uh, to one another and uh, kind of wanted to think about. Um, what it, it means like, related to sending a letter. But I wanted to ask uh, people in the audience, audience, like when you're sending a letter, what are, what are the things that can go wrong from like a privacy or security perspective? Uh, like what would happen like when you're sending a letter to your neighbor, what are some possible things that can happen if you want to, Drop it in the public chat. Um, yes. Oh, I can see that your letter can be lost in the mail. Um, you can, someone else can read the outside of your message, uh, see if you're communicating. I think we can like think about that in terms like of metadata. Or like you can kind of see if you're looking at email, um, uh, email protocol. You can see like the headers of the email. Uh, letter can get mutilated or damaged. These are great, um, like great uh, examples. So if I want to, I can synthesize these into some of. Uh, Kind of buckets of what those problems could be are uh, confidentiality. Uh, if someone's reading your your uh, reading your mail, you want to keep that private. Uh, if it gets sent to the wrong person, that's an authentication kind of error. And uh, so when changing your content, whether it gets mutilated like in root or um, gets changed somewhere after you sent it, that would be a, a problem to do with data integrity. Uh, so like, when we think about like encryption, like these are some ways to address some of uh, these concerns. Uh, from a technical standpoint, it's uh, scrambling data so that only authorized parties can understand the information. So basically, you're taking what's called plain text and then scrambling it up into something called ciphertext. 
um, which later can be uh, decrypted using the code that you uh, encrypted it with. So uh, here's like a little illustration of like Bob sending a message to Alice. He's saying, what's up? Then this is like plain text. He's just sending a message over there uh, in the clear, um, which can be potentially read by anyone. Uh, when you're like on a computer network or in any kind of network, um, if your messages will be like passed along to third parties until it gets to a recipient. So uh, if you're thinking like post uh, post mail, then you can think about uh, like the post office, uh, the, the trucks, uh, delivery men and women um, who are like carrying some messages. And at any point, they can read uh, the message in there. So encryption would be kind of scrambling it up. For, for Bob, would be scrambling it up so that the third parties wouldn't be able to read that information and only Alice would be able to uh, decrypt it and make it understandable. So this kind of can take the form in many ways. Uh, this is an example of uh, Pig Latin, which is a way in spoken language to obfuscate uh, what you're saying. So you have like a pattern of uh, like at what's up turns into you at sway up way or how are you turns into you out oh, hey our way ooh, yeah. so that way you can only kind of you're taking your spoken message and encrypting it in with a pattern so that you have to unscramble it the listener the listener has to unscramble it to make it uh, legible um, in history, there's also uh, the Caesar wheel uh, in Greek times where uh, they would take their alphabet and they would have it like on the disk where and then you would rotate uh, the key so that it can change like the, the message by turning like A's into D's, B's, into E's, these apps, and so on. So, in uh, like the Revolutionary Times, Thomas Jefferson made uh, what was called the Jefferson Disk, which kind of operated in the similar principles where uh, they would take like each disk had, uh, had a, an array of letters on it, and then you can Reassemble, reassemble um, the disks to make a different keys. Uh, and it kind of would operate like this. And this was kind of used until um, like World War One or something like that. Uh, and you can see that you, you would just rotate the key to make your message. Uh, and that would be the key here. Um, so a more advanced kind of machine that uh, kind of operated on these principles is the Enigma machine in uh, World War II. Uh, and it was for a long time considered uh, un uncrackable because they would change their uh, keys every day, uh, making it very difficult uh, to crack. And then here's an image from the imitation game, which kind of told the story about uh, some early computer scientists building machines to uh, decrypt these messages. Uh, and moving on into like the modern uh, modern encryption or modern use cases for encryption, uh, you would see uh, on, the, on like the internet where it's connected by various machines uh, on a network, uh, you're, Encryption becomes really important for um, passing messages along, so that computers in the middle wouldn't, wouldn't be able to uh, understand the message. So if you're communicating through like Wells Fargo, uh, you want to encrypt it like a uh, packet on your computer, so that as it passes to your 
your service provider, then different uh, computers on the way. Uh, only Wells Fargo can hear it. Um, cool. I guess that kind of brings up to the next point. So I want to just stop a little bit and just ask if anyone had any questions about like the history of encryption so far before we go into like some of the more details of it. Awesome. So in modern encryption, uh, there's kind of two forms of encryption. Uh, there's a symmetric encryption, uh, which uh, operated like the, in the ways that we uh, looked at earlier through history, where there is a single key that people use to both encrypt the message and decrypt the message. So that's what made, um, was like one of the, the flaws or disadvantages of uh, the more historical uses of encryption, where um, when in the case of like the Enigma machine, when they were encrypting their, their messages, uh, it made it possible for, uh, other, for other people to decrypt it but by, finding, by finding the key for that day. Uh, and then in uh, the next like, form of uh, encryption uh, is asymmetric encryption which is also known as uh, public key encryption, which is a practice of generating two, two keys, a public key and a private key for you to uh, encrypt and decrypt messages. So you would take uh, a public key and encrypt the message in a way that only the person with the private key or the secret key can decrypt the message. And then inside the middle would be uh, cipher text. Um, kind of taking a look at another look at this graph. Let's say Bob wanted to send a message to Alice. You take Alice's public key and encrypt his message so that only Alice, who has the pair of her public key, uh, to decrypt it. Another kind of look because it's a uh, kind of complicated or it can be a little um, confusing matter when you think about it. when you do a public key uh, encryption. Just gotta think about it. There's so two pairs, a key that has two pairs. Another way to look at that here. So Bob here would be taking her her message, Alice's message, encrypting it here, and then Alice would take her private key and uh, decrypting it there. Uh, and then you would uh, distribute your public key uh, like to the to the greater internet. Um, so if Alice wants to, she have to um, make her, her key available for other people to send messages uh, to her. Um, so this could be done uh, in several ways by like posting her public key on her website or uh, sending it individually to uh, recipients for them to encrypt or using uh, what's called the key server uh, um, is there something in the background I think I have a fan running so I'll just turn it off real quick uh, cool. oh, sorry there's a noisy street outside um, Awesome. 
does anyone have any uh, questions about uh, public or uh, key uh, encryption so far or symmetric? So making a note, uh, so this is kind of the section that I'm going to dive into a little bit more about uh, PGP and how that and uh, the program that can do uh, help us with these encryptions. So I'll post like a poll here and just say, anyone have any questions so far where we're ready to take a look at it? No. Uh, cool. Does any, uh, if you can please uh, strike in the chat uh, something, uh, your question, then uh, Cool. Well, I'm getting some sense that there's some unclarity. If you want to just uh, say I can repeat and a topic, uh, try to clear up some uh, questions uh, that you may have. I think also like in the second part, uh, we'll be actually taking a look at um, PGP and its uh, use of cases. Uh, and like that might help clarify like what is symmetric encryption or, or what is asymmetric encryption um, with like a little bit of uh, demoing might make a little uh, more sense. You know, to, so I guess sit tight and uh, also like feel free to drop in the uh, chat any questions or any comments or concerns. So moving on to um, what is uh, P PGP uh, and GPG. So PGP is a program uh, that can help you with um, it's called Pretty Good Privacy Encryption developed by Symantec uh, in 1991. Uh, it can help with uh, symmetric encryption, uh, asymmetric encryption, and digital, digitally signing uh, documents so that you know that there's um, no changes or uh, manipulations on a document uh, that you you sign. So GPG is a uh, GNU Privacy Guard, which is an open source implementation of uh, PGP. Yeah, definitely. I see Gary uh, wrote in the chat that Philip Zimmerman made it of uh, Norton Lifelock. Uh, and they made it and um, later became uh, available uh, in open source ways with uh, OpenPGP and uh, GPG. So the main uses of uh, PGP is for sending and receiving uh, encrypted emails, um, verifying the ID of of uh, who sent a message, uh, and also you can use it to store uh, encrypt files, which you will store on uh, on the cloud or on your on your local device, so that only uh, you or the person with your the private key 
can uh, unlock and decrypt a message uh, a file. And the process of uh, PGP would be to create uh, a key pair. And then you want, want to uh, make this uh, public key available um, to someone who wants, who wants to send you uh, an encrypted message. And they would take your public key and encrypt a file or a message to uh, with your key, send it, and then the person with the private key would be the only person who can decrypt the message. So the, uh, the asymmetric uh, encryption process. So what are the pros and cons of it? Um, and super secure. Uh, that there's um, free uh, free open source versions to use um, the, the, the uh, PGP standard. Uh, some of the cons that it's uh, not very uh, user friendly, uh, and it does and it requires some software to use. And because of uh, your public keys or your key pairs are associated with uh, your email generally, there's not uh, a lot of anonymity that goes along with it. So this is kind of what uh, a public key looks like. It's uh, an ASCII representation of your key. It gets uh, in, uh, text and numbers. And then you, this is something that you can, uh, people often will append to their emails or they'll put on a website where this is what you can like publicly give to someone in order for them to um, start sending you encrypted files. This, and you can just encrypt the message and just send it like through email, then they would be able to um, Take this this file and then decrypt it on their machine. It's so that so they like your e email providers wouldn't be able to um, read read a email. So some these are some uh, some GUI interfaces uh, that you can use uh, for uh, PGP. Uh, Easy PGP, uh, and can use a GPG uh, keychain. So uh, I'll be I'll be uh, kind of demoing um, how to use this uh, using a command line interface. Uh, I'll be showing it just as a way that we using Repl.it. That way, uh, you don't have to actually install uh, software um, on your computer to, uh, to just get some practice on seeing what it looks like. Uh, so, in shared notes, I have some links and I'll put them in the chat as well. Um, here is a Link to uh, Repl.it that we'll be using, and in the chat I also have uh, a Google Sheet that we'll be using as a way to uh, share uh, keys and uh, files uh, for the workshop. So I just drop them in there, and I'll just uh, start a new poll and like let me know if you have them open. Up and then uh, we can get started. So for folks who haven't used uh, Repl.it before, um, let me explain kind of this interface of while people are while people are getting onto it. Uh, so over here is the file explorer, which I pre-populated some files for us to to use. Um, and if you go to README, uh, they'll have some step through of everything that I'll talk for, uh, through for the workshop. And then on the right is uh, 
a computer terminal um, that we'll be using. Uh, so like in practice, uh, you can uh, install um, GPG, uh, the GNU version, uh, implementation of PGP onto your um, computer uh, and just use it in your uh, terminal application. Uh, you can also you download um, GUI interfaces for it as well. Uh, not that much. Uh, that I showed, but in this way, it's just a little bit easier for uh, the workshop. Uh, cool. Looks like have a good, uh, going. Let me drop a message in the chat. Uh, if there's uh, any problems, any open. Cool. So I want to show you uh, this demo uh, txt.asc, which is a encrypted file. So this is what an uh, encrypted message will look like here. Uh, so the way that you can uh, decrypt it so that is uh, in the terminal here. So this is encrypted with, uh, encrypted with a symmetric key or a symmetric encryption. So the command to try this, to read this message would be gpg d for decrypt. Then the name of the file demo.txt.asc. And when you press that, it's going to ask you for a passphrase, and this would. Uh, and type in hope 2020. And that would be what this message says. Hello, my secret friend. So this is uh, an example of symmetric encryption. So that way is basically there's the key that you, uh, when I encrypted the file, I choose a, a password which I have to um, then share uh, to you in order to uh, decrypt the message, uh, which had, and I in uh, secret message.txt, let's try doing a, encrypting the message, uh, a message. So uh, in secret message, what we'll do is we'll, uh, you can write a message in here, Click on here and then just type anything here. Welcome to the text. So what we'll be using uh, the Google Sheet in order to kind of share the messages. In uh, the chats, uh, there's um, often character limits. So uh, when you type in this message, in order to encrypt the message, you want to type in gpg dash dash symmetric, symmetric dash dash armor, and then the name of the file, secret message.txt. So explaining these commands is, uh, GPG, symmetric for their, uh, our symmetric encryption type, and then Arbor will produce an ASCII uh, file which you can uh, share. So when you type, uh, press enter there, it'll ask you for a passphrase. Twice. And when that happens, it spits out a message. Uh, with secret message that it creates a secret message txt dot asc then ASCII file of this. So if you would like, after you encrypt a message, just pop it over into um, here in the symmetric here. Then uh, you can crop in the message here, 
can type in the key that we used and then uh, have some practice doing that process. And then you can try uh, decrypting a message also. So if you uh, have that, feel free to post it in here. I think uh, when you post it in, uh, post it into um, use like this uh, this field to post it in. Otherwise, it kind of drops it into different cells. Trying to just uh, so if you want to decrypt the message, you can copy any of this message to see what this says here. Let's drop it into symmetric.asc. Just paste that in, and then we can decrypt it again by gpg d, and then the name of the file symmetric.asc. And it was did with hope 2020. So goodbye. Why is it different? Cool. So let me do a quick poll. Uh, Sarah, how uh, did you get, uh, were you able to encrypt a symmetric file uh, and decrypt one? So like this is one of the, um, so this is symmetric encryption and as you can see some of the disadvantages of using um, uh, this style of encryption is that you have to not only pass your message, but you have to, to provide the key as well. So that can, can be kind of tricky, uh, no, like having two different things that like you have to send, how are you going to, are you going to send this, uh, your key in encrypted version, or, or like a, whoever has the key will be able to uh, decrypt your file. Um, so it can be, uh, can be problematic. So let me take this message, I'll copy it over. Let's do the same file. Decrypt. GPG. Decrypt message. Uh, so there's a little. Um, quotation marks there. So if it was on a boo. that was put in. Let's see public chat. Key is hope 2020. Oh I see. Cool. Hope 2020. Oh. One more time. Yeah, if you uh, want to just uh, try stepping it through, I'll uh, kind of I'll do this in again message. 
song. So stepping through the process again, or it would be if you wanted to encrypt a message or a document. So you can encrypt like all sorts of documents uh, in this way. Like you can encrypt uh, PDF files, for example. Um, but we didn't just use the text. All right, this is Mark. Okay, again, to encrypt it, symmetrically, you would type in GPG dash dash symmetric dash dash armor, which gives you ASCII output, and then um, the name of the file, secret message dot txt. Uh, I'll have updated this and then I'll put, paste this into uh, a file here. Just the key again is oak twenty twenty. If uh if I shot this, this is from Mark. So I'll try decrypting this again. So I'm copying the message here, or this ASCII over to symmetric.asc. Um, so GPG dash D. Is a bad session key. Um, just check in. Uh, how is everyone? Uh, doing here. There seems, there seems to be another uh, error here. So I'm going to file. Yeah, yeah, so that should be right. Symmetric dash dash armor. Secret message dot txt. So then that would um, create a new file. Like a new file called secret message dot txt dot ASC. Um, So stop here again. Symmetric sample dot txt. Symmetric sample. So gpg dash dash symmetric. Font size armor, GPG dash or space, uh, dash dash symmetric, space dash dash armor, put the name of the file, symmetric example. Um, Oh, 
2020. Yeah, so yeah, if you're following the readme, um, I might be a little um, might be have a little bit of changes. So yeah, so the button, uh, just to check, double check, it would be uh, yeah, it'd be the symmetric dash dash armor for ASCII, and then the name of the file that you want to encrypt. Anyone drop one here, so just, I'll just uh, try decrypting this, and then, uh, and uh, we'll uh, move on to the next step, the next part. So ppg dash d, Symmetric ASC. Awesome workshop. Oh, thanks. So cool. So um, I guess if there are um, problems uh, with uh, in encrypting or decrypting uh, the symmetric, there are these examples. Um, try reading. Uh, just I guess try following along in the um, read me as well. So, uh, so here, here, so here you should say uh, you should say uh, secret message. So this is the name of the document uh, that you are filing. And then if you want to output pipe it to like a new file because you're just um, have been putting it uh, encrypting it in the terminal, you can pipe the output here to decrypt the message txt, for example. Then it'll just take that uh, file, that message, and then um, drop it. It'll uh, Make a new file. I'll put it. Cool. So this is uh, the symmetric uh, encryption. Um, yeah, I guess that. Let me know if uh, you have questions on this. Uh, I'll move on to the the asymmetric encryption that we were talking about. Uh, the key pair encryption that is uh, more I guess more powerful for. Uh, so like if you want to send a message so that only the recipient, the person that you decrypt it to or you encrypt it for can read it, you would need to ge first generate a key pair, uh, PGP key pair. So how you would do this would be to type in, uh, in your terminal a GPG dash dash GEN dash key. This would generate a key. Uh, you can put in uh, the name, and then I'll put in test email for now, and then press OK. Call for OK. I'll ask you for uh, a key passphrase that that way that you know have a secure. So every time you use um, your private key, then you'll have to have that passphrase associated with it. So then it will have this message uh, generated when you finish it. So let me type this again, gpg dash dash gen dash p. Uh, and then you can follow. Uh, follow the, the steps to do that. Okay, so if you do, um, I think there's, uh, if you do GPG um, 
full key gen, which is a full total key gen. Let's remember this. Full generate key. But I'll start asking you some like like full like more questions um uh PG. So if you do this, start asking you like what kind of uh, algorithms you want to encrypt it with. Um, it doesn't for for the, our purposes. Let's just do RSA. Okay, so so what was the pull of the uh, the pull was if there was uh you're able to generate the uh 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 you there's a you were able to successfully generate your key. So let me just ask again. Uh, cool. So um, for this purposes, uh, just you can pick RSA, and RSA would be fine. Or if you want to just do uh, gen dash key, uh, and it'll, ha it'll pick the, some of the defaults for you. So you don't really have to worry about it too much. Um, but generally, those are different like algorithms that they use to like mathematical uh, algorithms to make these um, key pairs. Let's just check here. No. So if there is um, okay. So if there is a prop, like let me know what if there's an error message that you're getting. Or um, yeah, what what what's happening? There's so I guess when you're using um uh, this version of uh of um GPG uh, that's installed on REPL, it has like some certain things like you have to have uh a long name and you have, you know. So when you press OK, so there's something that happens here where they kind of have stricter um, like key uh, phrase. So like our like password requirements, they don't really tell you. So like if you type in something uh, not good, then I'll just like keep looping this through without a message. So uh, for the purposes, here you can type in um, just like a longer workshop, a uh, longer uh, passphrase, um, as well as maybe a number or two. So if you're, let me know if you're able to get that uh, generated. Let me know in the chat if there's a issue. So in order to like see the private key, you want to do gpg export dash export secret dash key uh, and then the name It'll ask you for the password in order to see it. Um, so uh, let me type in. So this is like the binary uh, for your key. So type in dash dash armor. Um, and that'll give you the ASCII representation of, um, of your key. So this was, you can see here, this is your private key block. And this is what uh, you don't really want to share to anyone. Uh, but you can uh, export this and to save your, your key so you don't get, get it lost. And then you can load it onto different computers if you want to keep using uh, this. Okay, yeah, you never want to share your private key. Uh, so dash dash so space dash dash armor. I believe if you just do this is a, then it also 
be a shorthand for ASCII. Um, oh yeah. So this is your private key. So like your public key, what you do want to share, uh, you can type gpg um, dash dash export. And then you want to type in armor for ASCII. Uh, then dash dash output public key dot key. Uh, and then the email that you signed up with or you uh, made, you generated a key with. So let me step that through again. So gpg dash dash export to like export the key dash dash armor for ASCII and dash dash output and then the name of the file that it'll output it to and then the email that you generated your key with. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, there's like definitely like a lot of uh, Gary Lowry in the comments show that there's like things like key pass that have a different like key um, key managers uh, that you can use. But here, we're going to be just kind of using Google Sheets in order to share our, uh, our keys. I kind of just uh, illustrate um, how it kind of works. So when I ex make th this command, it created a public key.key .key file. And then here you'll see Zoom out one second. Thank you. Here you'll see the ASCII public key um, public key for you. So when you're encrypting uh, keys, you need uh, you need to be able to pub publicly share this, and then that way someone can they have to import your key in order to. Um, encrypt to you. So if you're able to uh, generate the key, public key, uh, take that, copy that over, then asymmetric, uh, kind of put it in here, public key, I'll paste it here, then I'll type the email I made it with, my email.com for now. Um, so let me know, like start like dropping that in. Let me know if you have problems. Uh, and please uh, tell me if you're having a problem, please tell me in the chat uh, what it is, what what we're like uh, where might be stuck. So uh, for yes is you're okay, and no for all uh, you're you want me to go repeat something or show something? Cool. So I have a couple people um, pasted their uh, public keys here. Um, so yeah, keep, keep uh, generating them and uh, publishing them. And so how you would like, uh, I guess like kind of a backtrack on this, like generally, yeah, you probably don't want to be using Google Sheets as a, uh, as your main way of storing your, your keys or if, uh, there's uh, this uh, kind of, for example, purposes. Um, cool. So I'll just show how to input the key here. So once you have uh, a key that you would like to import, just copy it over here.
uh, and then you want to go down to um, import public.key. There's a file there. And you can just paste this in. You're kind of so like what happens when like you just drop it into the um, the sheet or like kind of populate the different cells. So if you can uh, just drop it, and you're copying it and put post it in up here, uh, just like the input. Cool. Oh, so now you have uh, awesome. So now that we have, you, uh, you can copy this over, and then you want to into uh, import public key. And you can type in gpg dash dash import and import public dot key. And when you type that in, that'll import the public key. Uh, into um into your your key ring or your key list key list so then um i'm gonna like copy over a bunch of the rest of these just replacing uh import key as i'm going Awesome. Cool. Of the list, so that when you want to see like what is inside your list, you can type gpg dash dash list dash keys. So this will kind of be like your address book of the public keys that you have. So it'll give you like so like your email um, and ID for uh, the key and expiration dates and things like that. So the command was gpg dash dash list dash keys. So that will populate uh, show the keys. So we have um keys in there. So now we want to uh so now let's go take a look at how to uh send like encrypt a file so only the person, the recipient can decrypt the message. How you would do this? And right in, um, let's see, asymmetric. I'll make a new file here, add file. Uh, let's say asymmetric message.txt. Just made a new one here, which you can do as well. Um, this is a secret for, um, Let's see, I'm going to encrypt a file for myself and uh, kind of as an example. So what uh, you can do is type that in there. Or right, type in any message to anybody that you've imported into your list. GP, and then to encrypt it for me. And this would be the same. Uh, Syntax for someone else would be gpg dash dash encrypt or thanks uh, for coming.
So dgpg dash dash order dash r. Uh, then you would put the recipient email address. I'm using my email. Um, and then you'll want to put in the the file that you made the symmetric uh, message dot txt. And when I press enter there, it'll have created a new file an ASC. So this would be the encrypted version of this. What you can do is take this message and then um, crop it into uh, the person you encrypted to the message. And then I'll make it uh, a message. I'll, I'll encrypt it one, and then you can just encrypt it for everyone. So this is a message mark. So I'll do a symmetry uh, message. For you. But then I'll go down my list. So I think the key, uh, the recordings, I believe will be available later. I'm not entirely sure how they're distributed, uh, but hopefully they'll be out there. Uh, cool. So I'm going to go through and encrypt a message for everyone. Uh, here, so gpg dash dash encrypt dash dash armor for ASCII uh, dash r for recipient and then I'll do um, so I'll type encrypt it over there say yes uh, Seems to get caught. Um, let's see. Do that. So I'll um, demonstrate um, encrypting. So if I take this message here, if it's I'm gonna say it's probably not encrypted for my for my with my public key. If I were to try to decrypt it here, um, this is here. Formatting G dash D asymmetric dot AS ASC. You know, fail here because it has, I don't have, I don't have the secret key for uh, Hope 2020. So that's kind of what, that's what would happen if you don't have. The private key to to that public key. So, uh, um, so you can try 
reading some of these messages. All right. Uh, decrypt this, decrypting this message here. Um, so ask me for my thing. Yeah. Sorry. So it looks like this was encrypted by J. Uh, I'm able, only I would be able to see, decrypt it. But if you were to try to uh, decrypt this message, you'll see the error error that I saw that I saw earlier where it says uh, set up this. I don't have the secret key. I can I try to rerun this. So let's try Armor is symmetric. Message of this key. Dash R. Come over here to email. So here now, it can work after I restart up the REPL. So if I paste this to here, I can, um, I'll try dropping one for everyone here. So you would uh, again take take the message that was uh, signed to you or encrypted with your public key and drop it in here to your ASC decrypting. Uh, how is everyone doing so far? This is uh, you are, I guess, the you are, are you able to um, decrypt your file or your message? Cool. Uh, I guess, like, I think you mentioned it earlier, but like sometimes, like, REPL it kind of hangs up so you might have to rerun um rerun the raffle in order for things to work yeah cool i think uh totally um after this i'll probably uh kind of update the um all the instructions just so that you can hopefully follow along again so these are, um, so we so far we showed uh, symmetric encryption and asymmetric encryption with um, PGP. And then the last thing um, I want to cover that PGP uh, enables or helps for is uh, digital si signing. Uh, so in order to, uh, so the digital signature, uh, I'll show you, show you here where it's like when, um, when you create a document, then you can like sign it. So that way it's not necessarily like encryption, but it, you are kind of verifying that this document was 
made by you uh, and and it, the and it has been unaltered. So I'll give an example here in signature txt. So if you open this up, you can type in uh, is that altered altered is not altered. So I wrote uh, a signature txt. So I can type in gpg dash dash clear dash sign uh, signature dot txt. So what happens here, if you type that out, you'll have, um, it'll create a file called signature.txt.asc. So when that, what you'll have here uh, is, is a signed file of, so here is a, it's been hashed so that it, it won't be known to be altered. And then I'll have a, a PGP signature uh, here. So what, what you can do is GP, you can verify the signed document by GPG dash dash verify signature dot txt. ASC. So then you'll see here that it was a good signature. So that means that it hasn't been altered. It's signed by me. Um, and it's like it was made uh, signed with this key. If I were to change this, file in any way. And you'll see that it was a bad signature. So this is uh, very useful for, uh, I guess, if you're in a public forum or if you don't necessarily want to like, send an encrypted, like encrypt your message or encrypted document, but you want to uh, verify, make it so that it verifiably has not been altered or, and it is from you and you can create a digital signature. Uh, yeah, this is, um, similar to, uh, MD, like MD5 checksum. Uh, so it's like, Kind of like uh, you can check some um, for like often when you're downloading like programs online or like ISOs or then they'll have like a checksum that you can uh, verify against. So this is kind of this is the same. This is the same uh, principles or concept. So this is a, a SHA. 512 hash. So there's a couple other like ways that you can do the signature. Uh, if you do a GPG uh, sign signature txt, that'll generate uh, a compressed version of your your message with the signature is kind of creates a new file that you have to do deal with. Or if you do a uh, detach sign, detach, detach sign. What'll happen here, it'll create a whole new uh, just signature file. And then you can send this along with the file uh, to verify. 
you'll need both the um, original document and uh, and the uh, the signed signature in order to verify it. Um, cool. Anyone have uh, any questions so far? I think I want to leave a couple, a little bit of time just to just wrap things up uh, with what we looked at in terms for of PGP. We looked at how to um, digital, digitally sign uh, and verify. Um, we looked at asymmetric uh, encryption using. Um, uh, and like how to create a gen generate a key pair and import keys um, and create symmetric encryptions. So I kind of only scratched the surface of, of uh, what this program has to offer and like there's a lot more that you can um, learn about it. So like places to keep um, to keep investigating if you're interested in this is like looking up key servers, um, like how to manage your keys. Uh, you can take a look at PGP clients if you want to make this whole process simpler uh, to do this. Let's see a question, uh, do people still publish public keys to key servers? Uh, they do, um, I think, on like uh, so there's a lot of keys, public key servers that are still like active, and you can still be publishing uh, to there. Um, and if for those who are unfamiliar with a key server, is it's kind of a server or like um process where it's very much like basically how. I was, uh, we were using Google Sheets as our like way of storing uh, our public keys and making them available. But a key server is uh, somewhere where you can publish a key, um, your key and your email to that. So that way it makes it easier for you, for people to, um, to get, uh, people as public keys. So that it's not necessarily having to like individually like send it, send your public key to um to somebody that they can go to a key server um and getting that. Yeah uh, so Proton Mail uh supports PGP. I I do use Proton Mail. I think um what it's what it's like really awesome but i think what what it does is it uses like pgp or like asymmetric encryption on um uh pgp uh proton mail uses pgp on the back end uh, so we're kind of looking at um how to how like that works like under the hood. Um, Gary suggests uh, so revocation is uh so what you can do uh if you want to like revoke your um you, you, you what so like there's when you publish your key or your public key to um a key server like there's no way to really like remove um, your key from uh, the server. So what you can do is create like uh, like revoke the your your public keys. So that way, it would be um, useful. So. Uh, there's a, a link to uh, open PGP, uh, a, um, 
uh, a GUI version of like that uh, application will help with all the processes that we did. Um, in Proton Mail offers a web page process for key creation on that, or do you still have to generate the keys? Uh, no, I as far as, as I remember, Proton Mail um, don't really have to upload your own key to them, but it'll like have a, a like the mechanism for them is that both uh, if both um, Proton both email clients or Proton Mail. Uh, Yeah, so that if both the like, users are using ProtonMail, it'll like automatically do this process of signing documents um, for you. Um, I believe you can send like Proton Mail to like non. You can encrypt. Or is it, yeah, you can encrypt for like non Proton Mail users. You can, are able to send encrypted messages to them that they can. Uh, then you'll like provide them a link or something for them to decrypt it. Um, but you'll have to know that it won't be encrypted on their end. Like if they're sending to a Gmail, through Gmail, it won't be, um, and they uh, have to be, I guess, aware about both, both users being behind encryption. Oh uh, yeah, and yeah, there's different like mail clients that do support PGP that makes it a lot easier. Um, off, I like I've used uh, a couple before uh, Thunderbird uh, by Mozilla and uh, Contact as well. Anyone have any other questions? I think this is like mostly all the material I have. Uh, and my, again, my email is mark at markofalam.com. Uh, and you can feel free to send me um, any messages on there if you want to follow up on anything or. And you feel free on um, like run through like I'll be clear uh, cleaning up uh, the readme here, so that way it'll be like up to date. And then you can just hopefully step through through this if you have uh, any if you want to try it again. Um, cool. I'll be. I think there's only a few minutes left before the end of the session. So I'll stay on board until then, but thanks everyone for coming. I hope uh, you're able to uh, kind of get a more of an intuitive understanding of what encryption is. Um, yeah, so and I think Mark, PGP is like very interesting. Um, Kind of technology, but uh, I guess I want to leave um, impression more focused on like thinking about what is uh, encryption uh, and its use cases and what is asymmetric uh, encryption. Um, so, like, that's it's the basis for like not only PGP, but when you're um, using uh, like different end to end encryption apps. Um, such as Signal or Telegram or something, something like that. Then, kind of understanding, thinking about how that they're using like a key pair asymmetric kind of things in the background. Uh, so, like when you're creating an account, they're creating like a key pairs for you, and then um, they're ho like hosting on their on their apps. They're using like their 
uh, having like a public keys and things like that uh, for you. Um, so that's, I guess, what I wanted to just leave, leave that there. Uh, let me, I hope uh, we have a, yeah, yeah, I can definitely stop recording. Thanks to everyone for coming and uh, enjoy, you enjoyed the,